Hey, if you guys love beef barbacoa, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make it at home with a crock pot. Uh, it's actually super easy to make that way and it's loaded with lots of flavor. So beef barbacoa is essentially beef that's spiced with Mexican flavors and it's cooked low and slow until it falls apart super tender. And it, it's a dish that never ever fails to satisfy. People just love it. So uh, let me show you how to make it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is lightly toast our chilies in a dry pan. You only need about a minute or maybe two per side. And what you're looking to do is just lightly start to brown them a little bit. You don't wanna char them too much. What we're really doing here is we are loosening up the oils in the skins and uh, that develops quite a bit of extra flavor with the chilies. It's quite a bit like toasting seeds and nuts for grinding into powders. Go ahead and flip them. You just want about a minute or so per side, just till you can, uh, you can start to smell them a little bit. All right, so these are nicely toasted. I'm going to have to remove them to a plate, and you can see how the skins have darkened up a bit and loosened up quite a bit. Let the toasted peppers cool slightly, and then we're gonna go ahead and remove the stems and seeds. I find that a pair of kitchen scissors makes this very easy. And the seeds will easily fall right out, but if they don't, you can go in and kind of push it out. They tend to float around in the sauce. A lot of people just want them removed, and they can be a little bit bitter. Next, go ahead and place all of the toasted peppers into a bowl and then cover them with very hot water to rehydrate them. And this should take about 20 minutes or so. All right, next we have a chuck roast, a beef chuck roast. Beef chuck roast is perfect for this recipe because it uh, benefits from low and slow cooking. So go ahead and slice it up into two to three inch chunks. And you don't have to be super precise. And a lot of people make this with beef chuck, uh, with beef today, other cuts of tougher beef, uh, but traditionally it was made more with goat or lamb, but also beef. Nice big chunks. All right, get all the meat moved over into a bowl, and we will season it up. Now that these chili peppers are softened up, we're gonna go ahead and transfer them over to a food processor. Along with chipotles and adobo, I've got one can here. This is seven ounces, a seven ounce can of chipotles and adobo. You can use half of this if you want to, if you're worried about heat and too much spiciness. Uh, but I really love the addition of lots of chipotle. And also I'm gonna add some of the soaking liquid to keep this nice and loose. Probably add about a quarter cup. And you can use fresh water if you prefer. And a bit of salt. Really salt to your personal tastes. And we'll process until nice and smooth. All right, look at that, looking good. And if you want to, you can add a little bit more water to loosen it up to your preference. I like it to be a little bit loose. You can strain the sauce at this point if you want to, to uh, remove any of the extra little bits that are in there, but this looks nice and smooth, so I'm just gonna go ahead with the recipe. So now go ahead and pour your pureed chili sauce over the cubed beef. This is huge flavor right here, my friends. And then just go ahead and coat all the meat. I'm gonna get it nice and coated as much as possible. Next, we're gonna go ahead and sear the beef. So get yourself a good sized pan, heat it up to a good medium, a medium high heat, and add some olive oil. Let that heat up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and sear the beef a few minutes per side, really to uh, get it nice and browned. I like to get a good sear. This develops a lot of flavor. You realistically could skip this step and put the beef with the sauce right into the crock pot, but the searing here actually does a lot of extra flavor building. And do it in batches if you need to. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Okay, all the meat is nicely seared here and into the crock pot it goes. So the next step here is to deglaze the pan there's all these brown bits that are in the bottom, so I'm gonna add maybe a half a cup, quarter cup to a half cup of beef stock to the pan. And we're gonna go ahead and scrape up all those brown bits from the bottom of the pan. There is a lot, lot of flavor in there that is going to translate to extra big flavor in our barbacoa. 
And we're gonna go ahead and dump this into the slow cooker. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and add any remaining sauce into the pan. You wanna make sure you get all that flavor. Along with one and a half cups of beef stock and a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And here we have juice from one lime. And I have one good size onion that is chopped, along with four cloves of garlic, chopped, and some seasonings here. And you can vary up your seasonings, but here I have a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, along with two teaspoons of cumin, a couple of bay leaves, and salt and pepper to taste, my friends. And then we'll go ahead and just mix it up a bit. All right, at this point, guys, we're gonna go ahead and cook this slow cooker on high for four hours uh, or on low for six to eight hours, or really as long as it takes until that meat becomes super pull apart tender with forks. It uh, uh, could take a little bit longer or it could be done sooner, so you really just gotta check it, but usually it's a good four to six hours. Also, I wanna say this is obviously more of an Americanized version of a beef barbacoa. Uh, originally, barbacoa was cooked with uh, like different cuts of meats like goat or lamb um, in underground pits, but luckily for us today, uh, we have the magic of the slow cooker that makes it a lot easier for you uh, and for me <laughs> to make these kinds of recipes in our own kitchens. All right, check it out, guys. It's been a little over four hours and it smells amazing in here. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to a bowl. And there's a lot of the liquid that's still in the pot that you can leave in there, but save it, because that's super delicious stuff. We're gonna go ahead and shred it up with a couple of forks and look at how tender that is. It just falls apart so easily. No problem, this is, this is nothing. So once the meat's all shredded, my friends, you're really ready to enjoy it. You can add it back to the slow cooker with all that consomme, the liquid basically, and let it keep it warm and then you can serve it up how you want. Uh, it's outstanding as like tacos, uh, burritos, a sandwich, a, a burrito bowl with like all your favorite toppings. Really so many ways to enjoy it. Uh, but one way I really like it also is as a soup. So you can serve it in a bowl with that consomme and, and serve that as a nice soup with some added vegetables, maybe some hominy, nice toppings. So it's a lot like a birria that way. All right, let's give it a taste. Perfection. Beef barbacoa, my friends. This stuff is seriously delicious, seriously awesome. It's one of our favorites. Uh, I, I really hope you love it as much as we do, and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Um, but hey, if you guys are looking for more Mexican flavors, you gotta try my homemade chorizo. That is very delicious, easy to make, and uh, it adds a lot of flavor to many meals. Uh, but if you're also uh, instead looking for similar flavors, but something a little different, you gotta try my Texas style chili recipe. That does have a lot of the same spices and chilies. Uh, crazy delicious, I think you'll love that one as well. So, all right, I hope to see you in the kitchen next time. Mike from Chili Pepper Madness, bye.